Hello and welcome to Hashtag Friday Sews. I'm Lisa Ann Spencer. Thank you so much for stopping by my channel again. And for those of you who are new, oh, welcome. So glad you joined me. So today on this episode of Hashtag Friday Sews, I want to mention first that I have this little journal that was laying around unused. It's called Farm Fresh Goodness. It's cute. I picked it up from Tractor Supply quite a long time ago, or someone picked it up for me. But anyway, what I decided to do was, like a lot of you ladies that I have learned from on Hashtag Friday Sews, keep a journal or a sewing project book that tells you what you worked on, changes you've made, uh, the date, etc. And that makes it a little bit easier to keep up with things. So I have done that this week and I appreciate the ladies that I have learned that from. I've heard several, so I don't, I can't mention anybody specifically, um, but you know who you are, you smart, smart gals. Um, and I want to stop right here to say uh, thank you to today in Jen's sewing room for starting Hashtag Friday Sews. And as always, her channel will be linked in the description box below. Okay, I've been busy this last week and have accomplished um, a lot of things. So first of all, I want to give a denim update. Um, if you've watched the previous episodes, you know that I cut up a lot of jeans. It ended up being about 28 pairs because my husband went through his closet and found me some more. <laughs> um, but anyway, um, I took the remaining strips and just randomly sewed them together. No, no rhyme or reason really other than trying to get 24 to 25 inch width pieces and I have a huge stack here of those and what I'm going to do with these is make a my dog a kennel crate cover. We've been using a blanket for like seven years and I've got all this crap denim. Some of it's stained and worn so I want to put it to good use but it's going to the dogs so to speak. So I'm going to put this in my project basket for next week or later. I did finish the one apron that I um, showed you the beginnings of. I have completed it and I will insert a video here that shows me trying it on. Oh, and the skirt. I did make a skirt. Just as I described, a gourd skirt. You see the different colors of the denim. And um, put godets between every gore. I finished it with a little rolled hem because I wanted to keep as much length as I could. And I just put a plain wide band on the top. The nice thing about some of the denim material is that it was stretch denim, so I really did not want to put a zipper. I was prepared to do that, but it would just slip right on, and then the band is also stretch, so I treated it like um, I treated it like a knit, like a stretch knit. And I did use a simplicity pattern from my collection. Hang on just a second. Okay, I can't find it. I will pop the simplicity number here. It's an old pattern from the 1970s of a gourd skirt that was way too little for me, but I just took a single gore out of the package, measured around my waist and hips, and divided it by the number and made that many gores. It ended up taking, well, I made 13, but I think I ended up only using 11 or 12. So anyway, I also have a video here of me um, what do you call it? Modeling the gourd denim skirt. So 
I was pretty pleased with that. I mean, in a way it looks like a cheerleader skirt, like from the 40s or 50s probably. But, you know, I had this idea in my mind of what I wanted to do and I just went for it and did it. So I'm glad that I did and I'm happy with it. It's quite heavy and I think it's gonna be a little warm. Um, so I am gonna wear it to church tonight because our church is freezing cold and I know that I'll be comfortable, but I wouldn't wear it like if I know I'm gonna be out all day outside in the summertime. It would be really too hot. But anyway, I am generally pleased with um, my skirt that I made. Um, and I will say here, I am, I'm really tired of denim. I don't know when I'm gonna get the crate cover done because I really don't wanna touch any denim for a while. Um, so, you know, we'll see. The bonnet. I stole my little girl's baby doll. Hope that doesn't freak you out that I have a little baby doll sitting over here. But this is baby Terry. And I did finish my first, you know, working twall. And let me take it off of her little noggin. Oh, that's not going to work. I'm actually going to have to untie it. I had this beautiful blue ribbon in my stash and I just used it for the ties and see it's I did not perfectly gather it it's a little puckered here and there um, so I wasn't 100% pleased with it but it is fully lined and it's made out of this 100% Egyptian cotton it has this band, and by the way, the instructions give you very little to no information. It just says, attach the band to this piece and attach this to that. It doesn't even tell you, like, fold it over, make a seam. It just tells you, attach it. So that pattern from 1907 was really written for ladies who had a lot of experience sewing already. So I'm continuing to work on it. Um, I did work with my ruffle foot and try to learn how to do the pleating. It's a little harder than I thought and it's going to take some practice and some tweaking. So in my spare time I'm going to continue to work on these and I have a good friend who just found out she's having an, another, her second granddaughter. So I'm going to gift this to her so that she can give it to her grandbaby. I think that that'll just be lovely. Oh, one more thing. I did make one t-shirt pillow. It's kind of poking up there like elf ears. I think it's just the design. But anyway, it turned out beautifully. It's really neat how it wraps around and the seam is up here. It was real easy. Um, took me probably 45 minutes the first go because I had to watch a tutorial and then do the step and watch the tutorial, but I believe I could do this in 30 minutes or under. It was really pretty easy. So I will link that tutorial that I used below if any of you are interested in saving a favorite shirt and turn it into a pillow. So my project for the next week or two is a quilt. All right, so I'm not really a quilting person. I'm more of a practical gal. I have made two quilts in my life, one when I was in college from scrap material that I had kept from all my sewing projects since I started sewing in about eighth grade maybe. So I had a lot of scraps. I'm a keeper. I keep stuff, as if you didn't notice, and I like to put them to practical use. So I just cut them in squares, made a very simple twin-sized um, quilt for my college dorm room. It was cute. It lasted for about 15 years before it fell apart. And then when my grandmother passed, she had lots of pajamas, and nobody could wear them. She was so tiny. So I cut those up and did a nine-patch quilt and gave it to my dad. So, and, and they weren't very good and they weren't, you know, matchy matchy and they, um, but they were practical and they were memorable. And so anyway, that's the kind of thing that I like. Well, back in 1996, 1995, I belonged to this book of the month club and I could pick five books for 99 cents or whatever. Do y'all remember those? And I got this quilting book. 
And so in here it's called Qu Quilts So Quick. I don't even think it's in print anymore. Um, it wasn't very popular, I don't believe. But anyway, it has about a dozen, yep, 12 quilts that are supposedly easy. Well, I don't know about that, but anyway, I'm not, a, I'm, I'm not thrilled with quilts. They just don't speak to me. However, there was one quilt in this book. It's called a confetti toss. And when I saw this picture, I, I recognized instantly that it was actually one of the old-timey quilts that somebody's grandma made. They sewed, they kept every bit of scrap that they had and they used it uh, because, you know, people were poor and that's what they did. And this spoke to me and it's called a confetti toss and that's actually a picture of the actual quilt that was made beginning in the 1920s and finished probably in the 30s. So this is called a strip quilt where if you can see there's strips. Now this grandmother used two widths of newspaper column to make this quilt. So when the owner of the quilt started to make repairs, she found inside their actual newspaper with dates on it from the, what did it say, 20s all the way up to the 1950s. That makes me feel a little better. It took this lady 30 years uh, to make this. Um, I've been working on mine for 20, not because I didn't have enough scraps, but because I procrastinate. All right, so once again, thanks to hashtag Friday Sews, this is what I'm going to be working on. So let me show you mine, what I have so far. Um, let me begin by showing you. So you cut muslin strips, about four inches, four and a quarter maybe, and of a particular length. So I cut 22 of those strips. And what you do is you take your first scrap, and I've got three boxes of scraps. I'll show you those. They're already cut up. I chose the family of burgundy and red. I chose a family of yellows, whites, and creams. And I chose the family of blue. So I cut them up into, you know, small pieces. And what you do is, and I'm not gonna do like a real demo, I'll just tell you about it and maybe make a video on how you do it if anybody's interested. So you take a scrap of fabric, you lay it on the muslin like so, and of course it hangs over you're going to manipulate it a little bit so that you'll have a straight seam. So you sew it. You just sew it on there with like a 3 8 seam and you leave it there. Then you choose your next color. So like here's burgundy and you're going to put it right sides together and you got to make sure it's wide enough and then you sew the 3 8 inch seam allowance right along there and then you flip it down kind of like a ladder and then you do the same thing. You take the next piece, the blue, and you put it face together, sew the seam, flip it down, and you keep doing that, and you end up with these strips. So let me see if I can find a partial strip. Yeah, here's one. So here's a little short strip that maybe I was doing as a demo. So you can see, and this one doesn't have a lot of variety in it, and it ends up kind of going the same way. But you get a real confetti tossed look. So I've gotten 16 strips done so far, which that's pretty good, but I'm telling you, I started this like sometime after year 2000, like probably 2001, 2002. Here it is 20 years later, and I still haven't finished it. But you get the idea there of how it looks, and it's really neat, and it uses up all your scraps, which I love. So, I'm sure I covered up the microphone. I hope you could hear me. So, anyway, this is what I am going to be working on the next week, maybe two weeks, but I'm going to try to hustle through and get it done because 
I'm tired of it being in the drawer and I'll, I got my sojo working so I am gonna get that quilt finished all right that's really it for me for hashtag Friday sews um, so next week uh, what will I have for you hopefully I can show you a finished quilt um, I still need to make a t-shirt pillow I will do that and I continue to work on the bonnet oh there is one more thing a reward a reward I bought myself a reward for when I complete all this hard work so simply Delilah did a review I think on this simplicity pattern 8595 and she made I think the short maybe sleeveless one I'm gonna make the maxi with these peekaboo peekaboo sleeves here and I was in Hobby Lobby last week and I just happened to come across this lovely stretch knit material, which I think is just gorgeous. Can you see the pretty blue and brown? I love blue and it's got brown and it'll be really nice for the fall. So this is going to be my reward when I complete the quilt. All right, thank you for watching. I'll see you next week. Happy sewing.